Hi, welcome back to the channel. I'm Robert Cassard. I have a lot of people ask me about the songwriting process. They've heard some of my originals and they, they kind of want to get a window inside my particular process for songwriting. Uh, I've done a songwriting series that is all about different artists and how they do what they do. I'm excited though to take you inside a song that I'm working on right now uh, and to sort of show you that inspiration comes from very interesting places and that I think the most important thing for you as a songwriter is to be alert, be aware, stay aware of what's going on around you. You might find inspiration in a sound that you hear out in nature or some man-made sound. You might get inspiration from a certain chord that you hear in a song. I remember when I first heard My Sweet Lord, that diminished chord. <laughs> Maybe go, oh, I gotta write a song around a diminished chord. And I subsequently did that way back when. Um, so listen for inspiration, find inspiration in things. It might be in the headlines, the way John Lennon was inspired to write A Day in the Life after reading the newspaper. That inspiration can come from anywhere. And so today I wanna share a really interesting inspiration comes right back to John Lennon. So a John Lennon inspired song that I'm working on right now, stick around. So it's no secret John Lennon is one of my very favorite songwriters, if not my favorite. And the reason that I love John Lennon so much is that when he wrote so often, he would write something that we had never heard before, something that didn't sound like anybody else, something that sounded almost otherworldly, like it came from another planet. And that was partly the chord progressions, it was partly the melodies, it was partly the way he thought, the poetry of the lyrics, you know, so many different components of what, what made Lennon different, and I think, to some extent, better than many other songwriters. It's certainly more influential, as far as I'm concerned. He influenced me incredibly. So, recently, I'm noodling around on the internet and I find these old demos, Mellotron demos from when John Lennon first got a Mellotron in his hands and started messing around. And there was one particular little phrase, a lot of it was just junk, you know, things that I could probably never you know, do anything with. But there was one little piece that I listened to and I thought, ooh, that's beautiful and it's spooky and it sounds like it comes from another place, like another time, as if it's coming through a filter from, you know, the 1920s or something like that. So it really inspired me. I love this little phrase on the Mellotron. Here it is. at the same time I discovered that Mellotron clip played by John Lennon himself, someone that I knew very well was having some really deep problems, deep mental issues. And I really felt like they were living a half-life. This was an older person and I heard that sound and it, it felt like echoes of decades past. And I was thinking about this, this person that I love so much and how different they had been in, in the past, like long ago. And I started to think maybe I could write a song about the sort of half-life they're living, heavily medicated and just not really able to enjoy life, to travel, to do all the things that really make life worth living. So a John Lennon Mellotron clip and the reality of what was going on with this person who I really love uh, came together into this idea of half-life. They're living a half-life. So this is a song that I've been actually writing and producing simultaneously, changing the structure right inside Logic Pro, which is my favorite DAW, figuring out where should the Mellotron clips go. I found a beautiful little descending little piece of him probably messing with an oscillator wheel or something and loved it. So I thought well, I can use that. That's a really interesting way to segue from one piece to another. I imported the phrase into Logic because I wanted to kind of figure out what would be the best tempo to play with this at. And I began to play with the Mellotron clip and rhythm, just rhythm, just trying to say, how can this Mellotron clip fit into a rhythmic bed? So here's what that sounds like. John Lennon inspiration went kind of deep for me because probably my 
favorite of his songs is Strawberry Fields because of the way it evokes the past, the way it evokes memories and sort of keeps you guessing. You kind of never know where the song is going. For me, that was something I wanted to have in this song, not really knowing where things are going. So I began to play around with other elements. What could I bring into the song that would kind of keep me off balance? And I found an electric piano sound that I really liked, so I brought that in. So when I write lyrics, I usually use something called Master Writer. And this is a subscription service, something that I find very worthwhile uh, because it allows you to put in a word and find rhymes for it. Imperfect rhymes, perfect rhymes, multi-syllable rhymes, single-syllable rhymes, phrases from pop culture, all kinds of things that come up. As you write a song, you're pulling together ideas and what this is doing is jogging your brain in interesting ways. So for example, I got the first line, I don't remember when I lost count of the years, I just remember that I did. And I remembered the way it used to feel talking to this person when I was young. And that inspired the next set of two lines. I don't recall the way you used to talk to me. It was so different when I was a kid. I don't remember when I lost count of the years. I just remember that I did. I don't recall the way you used to talk to me. so different when I was a kid. So this person was living in an elder care facility and I really felt like uh, they had kind of lost lost touch with reality, with nature, with things that are sort of nurturing to the soul. And that inspired the line, they tell you that the sky's still blue. You know, the idea is you're inside. You really don't know. Yes, you can look out the window, but you don't really ever go outside. They tell you that the sky's still blue. Now, what can you do with the word blue? Well, in Master Writer, you can double click and open up all kinds of different rhymes. And of course, there are many exotic rhymes you could use, but one of them is true, right? So they tell you that the sky's still blue. Now, where might I take that? how can you be sure that's true? My thought is you're stuck inside. You don't really know. It's almost like looking out the windows, like looking at a painting, you know, it's not, may or may not be real. So they tell you that the sky's still blue. How can you be sure that's true? Saw him coming out of church last Sunday, never asked him to pray for you. So there's another one. So we've got blue, true, and you, you know, you could say, well, those are kind of trite rhymes, but not when you string them together in a way that really has some power and, and makes you ask some questions. They tell you that the sky's still blue How can you be sure that's true? Saw him coming out of church last Sunday Never asked him to pray for you so there's a sort of religious component in this community and that made me want to explore that idea. That's where the coming out of church last Sunday came from. This person was living such a half-life that they really were not in touch with much of anything, even their own religious beliefs and religious faith. So they're saying that they worry about what you believe, but you're already halfway home. You know, you're basically on the way to heaven heavily medicated, right? This medication from the land of make-believe. And then I was thinking, well, how can I, how can I connect with the word home, right? You're already halfway home and realizing that the medications basically elevate or put you up high. So you're de detached from reality. And one of the rhymes that came forward was Astrodome. <laughs> high in your own Astrodome, right? It's not the Astrodome, it's your Astrodome. So I had a little fun with that one. They're saying that they about what you believe You're already halfway home This medication from the land of make-believe Up so high in your own Astrodome Continuing on with that verse, I wanted to actually echo, I wanted to repeat the rhymes of the previous 
second verse chunk. So they tell you that the sky's still blue. How can you be sure that's true? I did. They swear to me that you're still you. How can I be sure that's true? Right? So now you got something you're questioning. I got something I'm questioning. I saw you in the greenhouse with no flowers. Why could I see right through you? That was my way of encapsulating how you're not really even there. They swear to me that you're still you. How can I be sure that's true? Saw you in the greenhouse with no flowers. Why could I see right through you? And then, I knew, okay, this is deep, it's kind of abstract, it's a little bit like, what, where the heck are we? And, and even musically, it's a little bit where the heck are we, and partly because of that Lennon riff. So I wanted to come to a place where we could really anchor the song. My favorite songwriting tip is what I call Khan's rule. This is a rule that came from Sammy Khan. He basically said, no matter what you say in your verses, if you want to set up a chorus properly, the lyrics of a chorus, ask yourself, or say, and that's why I say dot, 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 chorus, right? So what's going on here? You know, they swear to me that you're still you. How can I be sure that's true? Saw you in the greenhouse with no flowers. Why could I see right through you? And that's why I say, where are you now? You know, you're living a half life. Where are you? I don't even know. I don't know you. I don't know where you are. I, I can't like get access to you. So where are you now? And how can half be whole? You know, how can this half-life be a whole life? Where are you now? I repeat that again. I'm trying to find your soul. I'm trying to get to the essence of who you are. And I'm hoping that it's there, right? So I wanted to play in this section. I wanted to be repetitive. I wanted to basically let this be almost like my mantra. Where are you now? How can half be whole? Where are you now? I'm trying to find your soul. Some of my very favorite songs, you know, a song like Hey Jude is incredibly repetitive at the end. It brings that, that theme back over and over. Uh, Lord takes the same chord progression and works it in solar power now. And my attitude is it's a beautiful thing. Mondo Cosmo did a tune uh, that used the same kind of progression. I basically modified the progression a little bit, but did something very similar and wanted this to be repeat, 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 but to do it in such a way that it builds. So in my idea, that was, I'll start low. I'll do a couple of repeats in the low register. Where are you now? How can half be up an entire octave I'll repeat it like I'm really trying to find you you know um, it's urgent that I try to find you or that I that I do find you where are you now how can half be whole Yeah. 
and then I want to let the guitar rip for a little while and then bring it back down to earth and have a quiet, almost psalm-like ending and back to John Lennon's Mellotron. <laughs> is the way this song is and has been coming together. I appreciate you coming along with me on the journey, you know, because I want you to say to you, there really are no particular rules that you have to follow when you're writing. And sometimes the very best songs come from really throwing the rule book out or finding one little unique piece of inspiration, like finding out that John Lennon did some demo recordings on a Mellotron and that nobody's ever released them my turn to do it and turn it into something hopefully beautiful and that not only captures the essence of the situation that I wanted to share, but even brings back a little bit of something of the way John Lennon constructed and made music. So that's part of the way I'm taking that inspiration. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, take a moment to like, subscribe, and hit the bell as always. And please come back and check out what's happening next. I love having you here and hope you'll keep playing, singing, songwriting, and anything else musical. See you next time. <laughs>